the book of Hosea with a word of wisdom from our Father in Jesus' name, verse 1. The word of the Lord that came unto Hosea, which means salvation. And who is the word of the Lord? The word made flesh, the Lord Jesus Christ. This book of Hosea, the book of salvation, lays out God's plan of salvation using this one Hosea as an example, as well as his wife and his children. Hosea, the son of Beri, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. So this also concerns the natural seed, the houses of Israel, and the house of Judah, from which Christ would come. The beginning of the word of the Lord, there it is again, by Hosea, which means salvation. And the Lord said to Hosea, Go take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms, for the land hath committed great whoredom departing from the Lord. So Hosea here will serve as an example of our father. And within this, you have his feelings whenever his children rebel against him. Whoredom being used as an analogy. And in the book of Revelation, you can read of the whore of Babylon. That's what happens when most of Christianity whore after the false Christ and depart from the Lord. So he went and took Gomer, which means completion, the daughter of Diblaim, which means a double fig cake. This will also concern what happens at the end of this generation of the fig tree, which conceived and bare him a son. She bare Hosea a son. That's very important. Jezreel is going to be his name, which means the seed of God. And this isn't an illegitimate child of whoredoms. This is the child of Gomer and Hosea, the firstborn, and Christ is the firstborn of the creation of God and the firstborn of the dead. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word is God. And our Father has three offices, the Father, the Son, which is the office of Savior, and the Holy Spirit. And the Lord said unto him, Call his name Jezreel, which means the seed of God. And who is the word of God as well as Abraham's seed? The Lord Jesus Christ. So this accentuates the office of Savior in the Son with this one Jezreel, which means seed of God, the woman seed written of in Genesis chapter 315, the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ was the seed that was promised to Abraham, Christ being Abraham's seed. And if you're in Christ, then you're Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Remember how this book started out, the word of the Lord, the word made flesh who dwelt among us for yet a little while. And I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu and will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. They would be taken into captivity by the Assyrian, the 10 northern tribes, that is to say, and would go north over the Caucasus Mountains into Europe, forming the Christian nations. And with the ten northern kingdoms, not only do you have Ephraim, which is the commonwealth of Great Britain, but also Manasseh, which is America, the superpower. But it's only through Christ Jesus, the Word of God made flesh, that this can come to pass, that they can become the Christian nations in the first place and return to the Father. And it shall come to pass at that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. And she conceived again and bare a daughter. Notice it didn't say she bare him a daughter. She didn't bear Hosea this daughter. This is a daughter of whoredoms. And God said unto him, Call her name Loruhama, for I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away into captivity. Loruhama meaning no mercy. And look at it through Hosea's eyes. You wouldn't have mercy on a child that your wife got pregnant with committing whoredom. You'd be too angry to have mercy on that child initially, at least. I think we can all agree with that. And the reason it's being done this way is our father is conveying his emotions. How would you feel if this happened to you? That's the point here. And again, Jezreel that we just read of, nothing negative was said about Jezreel, but this one is called Loruhama, no mercy. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah and will save them by the Lord their God and will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by horsemen through the office of Savior, through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ is how salvation is obtained. And that's who Jezreel is symbolic of. And I think you'll see that as we continue on. Now, when she had weaned Loruhama, which was symbolic of Judah, that's why the house of Judah was mentioned in the previous verse, she conceived and bare a son. It didn't say she bare him a son. She conceived and bare a son, another child of whoredom. 
Then said God, Call his name Loami, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. Loami means not my people. This was not Hosea's child, understand? Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered because of Christ. Jezreel is a type of Christ here. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. And this is quoted in Romans chapter 9, verse 26. And Paul there explains the meaning of this book of Hosea, that it was speaking of Christ who was to come. All who are in Christ are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. That's how you return to the Father. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, and they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel, which means seed of God, the day of the Lord. Whenever the true Christ returns, that's when the house of Israel and the house of Judah come back together as one under one head, the Lord Jesus Christ, as you can read of in Ezekiel chapter 37. Chapter 2 of the book of Hosea Say ye unto your brethren, now who is this speaking to? Say unto your brethren, Ami, whose brother was Ami, originally called Lo Ami, it was Jezreel's brother. And to your sisters, Ruhama, her name originally was No Mercy, and Ruhama means mercy because of Christ. So who is this speaking to? This has to be speaking to Jezreel, not Hosea. Notice chapter 1 was in the third person. It said in verse 2, the beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea, and the Lord said to Hosea, go take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms, for the land hath committed great whoredom departing from the Lord. That's in third person, and we'll see in chapter 3 that that's in first person. Whose point of view is that from? I think we'll see that it's not Hosea most likely, but you can decide that for yourself. That's speculation, but I think you'll find that it makes sense. Why is chapter 3 written in the first person, while chapter 1 is written in third person. Think about it. Say unto your brethren, Ami, and to your sisters, Ruhama, plead with your mother, plead, for she is not my wife, neither am I her husband. Let her therefore put away her whoredoms out of her sight, and her adulteries from between her breasts. We're speaking of idolatry here. Lest I strip her naked, and set her as in the day that she was born, and make her as a wilderness, and set her like a dry land, and slay her with thirst. So we're speaking of the land here, and if you read Ezekiel chapter 16, this makes a lot more sense, because that explains how God married the land of Jerusalem. And I will not have mercy upon her children, for they be the children of whoredoms. For their mother hath played the harlot, she that conceived them hath done shamefully, for she said, I will go after my lovers that give me my bread and my water, my wool and my flax, mine oil and my drink. These children of whoredoms are who this is concerning. And notice Jezreel wasn't mentioned, but Ami and Ruhama were. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up thy way with thorns and make a wall that she shall not find her pass, and she shall follow after her lovers, but she shall not overtake them, and she shall seek them, but shall not find them. Then shall she say, I will go and return to my first husband, for then was it better with me than now? And the only way to do that is through the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no other way to the Father. And within all this, you have God's plan of salvation. For she did not know that I gave her corn and wine and oil, our Father says, and multiplied her silver and gold, which they prepared for Baal. That's speaking of Satan, ultimately. Whenever it mentions Baal there in the future ascents, they're going to whore after the Antichrist, ceasing to be the virgin bride of Christ and becoming the whore of Babylon. Babylon means confusion. Therefore will I return at the seventh trumpet and take away my corn in the time thereof and my wine in the season thereof and will recover my wool and my flax given to cover her nakedness. Whenever a Christian worships the devil, they lose credit for all their righteous acts. Your righteous acts make up your fine linen that you wear in heaven, as we know from the book of Revelation. But once they worship Satan, they'll be made naked. And this is why Christ would say in Revelation 16, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And now will I discover her lewdness in the sight of her lovers, and none shall deliver her out of mine hand. 
I will also cause all her mirth to cease, her feast days, her new moons, and her Sabbaths, and all her solemn feasts. Notice it said her feast days, her new moons, her Sabbaths, and all her solemn feasts. Not God's, but hers. The traditions of men that make void the word of God. Spiritual adultery. And I will destroy her vines and her fig trees. It will happen in the end of the generation of the fig tree. Whereof she has said, These are my rewards that my lovers have given me, and I will make them a forest, and the beasts of the field shall eat them. And I will visit upon her the days of Balaam, wherein she burned incense to them, Balaam being the plural of Baal, the other gods that the Israelites of old worshipped. And you see that nowadays with the Christian nations. Anything you put between you and your heavenly father is an idol. There's nothing new under the sun. And she decked herself with her earrings and her jewels, and she went after her lovers, and forget me, saith the Lord. Therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness, and you can read of this in Revelation chapter 12, and speak comfortably unto her, the comforter being the Holy Spirit. And I will give her her vineyards from thence, and the valley of Achor for a door of hope. And she shall sing there as in the days of her youth, and as in the day when she came up out of the land of Egypt. Talking about Mother Israel here, again, Revelation chapter 12, you can see Mother Israel in the first world age even, with a crown of 12 stars symbolizing the 12 tribes of Israel. She brought forth a man-child in this world age, and that's speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's all right there in Revelation chapter 12. And it shall be at that day, the day of the Lord, the thousand years, saith the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ishi, my husband, in other words, and shalt call me no more Baali. They'll no longer worship false gods, in other words, because they'll be blotted out in the lake of fire at the end of that thousand years if they continue to whore after Satan after the thousand years are finished. The great white throne judgment determines who goes into the lake of fire and is blotted out of existence and who goes into the third world age. And that's salvation right there. You're not saved until the great white throne judgment unless you take part in the first resurrection into eternal life, which happens at the beginning of the thousand years. The first resurrection written of in Revelation chapter 20. For I will take away the names of Balaam out of her mouth and they shall no more be remembered by their name. And in that day will I make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven and with the creeping things of the ground, and I will break the bow and the sword and the battle out of the earth, and I will make them to lie down safely. You can read of this in Ezekiel chapter 39 as well as other places. As far as there being no more war, once the flesh is done away with, upon the return of the true Christ, the true Prince of Peace. And I will betroth thee unto me forever. Yea, I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness and in judgment and in loving kindness and in mercies. I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness and thou shalt know the Lord, Yahweh in the Hebrew, our heavenly father. And it shall come to pass in that day I will hear, saith the Lord, I will hear the heavens and they shall hear the earth. And listen to this next verse very carefully. And the earth shall hear the corn and the wine and the oil, and they shall hear Jezreel, which means the seed of God. This is speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ in the futurist sense, ultimately. That's what we're talking about here. This is the blueprint of God's plan of salvation. That's why the book is called Hosea. And I will sow her unto me in the earth through the Lord Jesus Christ, Jezreel meaning seed of God. That's how God will sow her unto him through Christ. And I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. In other words, her name will be Ruhamah rather than Lo Ruhamah. And I will say unto them which were not my people, Lo Ami, thou art my people. The name being changed to Ami, as we saw in the beginning of the chapter. And they shall say, Thou art my God. Chapter 3. Then said the Lord unto me, Go yet love a woman, beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress, according to the love of the Lord, toward the children of Israel, who look to other gods and love flagons of wine. These are raisin cakes, worshiping other gods. As I said, this is written in first person. Who is this from the point of view of? I think it's from the point of view of Jezreel, and as much as we saw in chapter 2, verse 1, Say ye unto your brethren Ami, and to your sisters Ruhamah, 
whose brother and sister were Lo Ami and Lo Ruhama. They were Jezreel's brother and sister, weren't they? And again, chapter 1 concerning Hosea was written in the third person. This is written in the first person. So here you have the office of Savior, the son, the firstborn of Hosea, who was symbolic of the father. Then said the Lord unto me, Go yet love a woman, beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress, according to the love of the Lord toward the children of Israel, who look to other gods and love flagons of wine, raisin cakes, that is to say. So I bought her to me for fifteen pieces of silver, and for an omer of barley, and an half omer of barley. And I said unto her, Thou shalt abide for me many days, thou shalt not play the harlot, no choice in the matter, notice that, and thou shalt not be for another man, so will I also be for thee. And the omer and half omer of barley are the equivalent of thirty pieces of silver. So see how it's speaking of the first advent of the Lord Jesus Christ, beginning with the election, those chosen from before the foundation of the world. Because they're predestined to become Christians, they have no choice in the matter. And you can see here that this wife is sequestered and ordered not to play the harlot, and thou shalt not be for another man, not for that man of sin, in other words, so will I also be for thee. So beginning with the election, as well as whosoever will stand against Satan, either at the end of this generation of the fig tree or after the thousand years are finished, it begins with the election, the first fruits of the first world age, though. So already in these first three chapters of the book of Hosea, which means salvation, you have God's complete overall plan of salvation. If you take the time to understand what our Father would have us know from his word, the word of the Lord. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, and without a prince, and without a sacrifice, and without an image, and without an ephod, and without teraphim. Afterward shall the children of Israel return, and seek the Lord their God, and David their king. This is speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ, the son of David, the root and the offspring of David, as he's called in Revelation, and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. And there you have it. This doesn't just concern the history of the ten northern tribes and Judah. This also concerns Christ's first advent as well as his second advent at the end of this generation of the fig tree and going even up into the eternity, the third world age.